Hi there, my name is Nils with Learn to DIY, and today we're going to give you an overview of how to use PEX pipe and PEX fittings to do your plumbing for homeowners. So let's say for example you have a scenario where you need a half inch pipe and you've just got to run another one off of it. You've got to create a T. With PEX it's really nice because you have your red pipe for hot, your blue pipe for cold, and then there's also white PEX which is probably the more common to use in a lot of situations. It's actually a little bit less expensive at most places, but I really love using the red and blue because it's very clear to see what's hot and what's cold. So to do that, it's really simple. We're gonna take this, we'll take a basic pair of shears here, and these are ratcheted, and so as you close it up, they, they hold in place for you, and you can use these to cut PVC or anything else, and they only cost about 12 bucks for a set like this. So I can put this in here, make a cut, and it's going to cut nice and clean like this and not much to it. So that'll do a really nice clean cut. I'm going to cut one more piece for our T here. Okay, so I've got three pieces and I'm going to make a T like this to run off to a sink or a toilet or something of that nature, for example. So all we need to do for that is we can take one of our elbow or our T's here for the half inch. And you'll notice I'm using shark bite for most of these and it's kind of convenient because all of the half inch stuff has pink on the bags and all of the three quarter inch has blue on the bags. So I'm going to show you how to use both of these types of crimps here. So first we'll slide over a copper ring on one side and then we'll fit in our barbed T. Then on the other side we'll slide on a pinch clamp and also slide that over the T. Make sure to get right up to the ends. There's little stoppers on here that you can see, and that's how you know you've got it right up to the right place, right there. So I'll put those in place, and then we can pick another one for our um, T here. So I'll put another clamp ring on here. There we go. So that's the general structure of it, and now to tighten these down, we're going to make sure that these are about one eighth of an inch away from the end of the pipe. And for the clamp rings, or the pinch clamp, sorry, I'm just going to use my tool here to go ahead and tighten these down. And you'll see it's got a nice wide open mouth. I'm going to apply that to the thick part that sticks out here on the clamp ring. Pinch clamp. <laughs> I can't get the terminologies right. Okay, so I'll put it on the pinch clamp here. It has to be all the way open to start. There we go. Okay, so once that's in there, then it's really just a matter of squeezing that. All right, and you can see from the profile here, it really squeezed the heck out of that thing and brought that whole clamp right in tight and it even created a little cinching factor there on the pipe, which is exactly what we want. Now real quick, I'll do the same thing on the next one, the other pinch clamp. Put that in, make sure I'm about an eighth of an inch away from the end. I'm in good on that barbed T. And it ratchets down. And there we go. So that one's all set as well. So those two are good. Now I'm going to show you how to do the copper rings. I've got a little tool here, and this is also pretty inexpensive. And you can see it's got a half inch crimp up here, a three eighths crimp. And the cool thing on this is you can flip it around and you can have on the other side now, you've got your three quarter crimp and a three quarter gauge. So we'll show you how these, these all work in just a second. So I'm going to place this with a half inch crimp onto my ring. Again, lining up our uh, approximate one eighth gap there toward the end. And then all you need to power these is a pair of vice grips. So I've got some vice grips here and I've already got them set to the right size so that I can squeeze them down and they'll close the, the clamps here. So as I do that, you can see it's squeezing down until it closes all the way like that. Okay, so now that's on there really good and we're going to check to make sure that that's on there all the way with the go no go gauge. Remove that, take it back off and then right down here we have the half inch no go gauge and the half inch gauge. Basically what that does for us if our ring fits in the half inch go gauge we should be all set if it fits in the no-go gauge, that means we've squeezed it too far and it's going to be a little bit oblong, which means it could leak, which is bad news, of course. 
So I'm going to fit it in here. And yeah, you can see right here, it fits perfectly in that half inch go gauge and it does not fit in the no go gauge. So we're good. So we have a nice watertight fitting just like that with some simple tools and not a lot of work. And we can use T's, we can use our uh, elbows. We've got plugs um, for the end of a line or stubbing something out. We can connect this to a uh, 3 8 inch nut here for connecting to a uh, water supply for your toilet or for a sink. Um, even over here, we've got the kind where you can connect this to your shower for your hot and cold or your shower head and you can fasten this to a two x four or something on the wall. And it's got a nice barbed PEX fitting just like that. Now, both with the half inch and the three quarter inch, you can buy these little clamps that actually are holders. They hold everything down in place. And then you can basically just, let's say we did this connection here. We wanted to fasten it. Uh, you can just put it right up against like that, drive the nail into a stud or a two x four back behind it. And that holds everything in place. Another really nice thing about PEX is it's flexible. You've got a good amount of flex in there. You don't want to overdo it or try to do crazy angles or anything like that, but it can go pretty far before it starts to crimp or bend. If it does crimp or bend, it needs to be replaced. It's not something with PEX B at least that's going to recover from that. I just thought I'd show a quick real world example of where this is applicable. I've got a hot water pipe up here that I need to splice into to run a hot water line up to our upstairs bathroom. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that using just the same techniques that we just looked at a minute ago. So here's the cold water that comes in to the water heater itself here. So I'm also going to make sure that's off. Next, I'll turn the hot water on, turn it on the hot side, especially down here in the basement where I can. Same thing in the kitchenette. Already have no water to the shower, so that's a good sign. All right, this one is about done and all of the other ones are drained. So we're ready to cut open the line. I've also brought a rag to cover this up. What I'm thinking I'll do is I'll cut it right over here, just because there's all this goop here as it goes into one of the air returns. So I'll get that ready. I'm just gonna use the same cutters that we showed earlier. Get them primed a little bit, and I'm gonna cut probably right here. Okay, we'll cut in here. And I'm gonna kind of protect this just so it doesn't come squirting out at me. Move this over a bit. All right, here we go. Okay, we've got a little bit. Not too much coming out, that's good. Okay, you can see there's not much there, which means we did a good job of draining the lines. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna point these down, here we go, to really get anything that's left. Now with those cutters, I'll create a slightly larger gap, enough that we can fit the T in it with a little bit of uh, finagling. So I'll go about here. Okay, so I've got about a one inch gap in there. I'm gonna slide my pinch clamps onto the three quarter inch there and here. And then I'll basically, oh, there's some water still coming out. Fit the barbed fitting in there, as well as in there. Good, okay, that's exactly what I needed. Now I've got the half inch pipe. You probably can't see it on camera, but it's pointing up that way towards where the water line is going to go, my half inch. So now with those in place, I'll take my crimping tool, get my measurements about an eighth inch away there. There. There we go. There's one. Make sure that one's all the way on. And there's two. Okay, so our three quarter inch line should be good to go. Now we'll do the same with the half inch line as I feed it upstairs. I'm gonna start by placing it up. In fact, I'll put this end up. 
that's going up to the bathroom upstairs right next to the cold water i'll put a crimp ring on it pinch clamp on it and then fit it over the barb fitting just like so and we should be good yep i think we're okay And that's that. So now we have an open line upstairs that we'll go take a look at. But down here, the plumbing is done. That took like five minutes to do, maybe less, and that's it. So this is the appropriate time to put a flange on, like this white one right here. And I don't have one right now, so I'm actually gonna have to put one on after by cutting it and sliding it around. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna move ahead. I'm gonna use my cutters to cut this to length. And I'll slide on my pinch clamp facing out toward me. Put in the valve. I'm going to kind of face it that way a little bit. And then, as long as I can reach it anyway, there we go. It's just a matter of clamping down on this thing. There we go. And now with the valve closed, then I should be able to turn the hot water back on. Nothing will come up here until I open it and I can connect this to the bidet that we're gonna be putting up here. Okay, now the hot water's, or the cold water's coming back into the hot water heater. And I've already turned the main on, so I hear water going into the sinks. But up here, we are dry and good. Okay, right now all of the water is back on, including the hot water, and that has sealed off really nicely. No leaks, no issues, and that's how easy it can be to install a new water line. So hopefully this helps you feel a little less intimidated by working with some of the plumbing inside your home. Working with PEX in particular can be actually pretty straightforward and simple to work with. And I've done full basement finishes, uh, new bathrooms, different things like that. And this stuff has always been very reliable, never had any leaks or issues with it. And it's just a great way to go. So if you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave those in the comments section below. We've got several other videos coming out around plumbing and plumbing for homeowners and just helping you get started and feel comfortable with whatever plumbing you need to do in your home. My name is Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.